Hello and welcome to a look at Soldier of Fortune for the Commodore 64. A game that was made by Brass Gold and released by Firebird. The plot of this game is that many, many, many years ago, some mages designed the Zodiac Power Source, a device which kept all evil at bay, basically kept it trapped, buried deep underground for uh, thousands and thousands of years. But Quillis, a person with some magical interest and inclination, deciphered the secret of the zodiac power source and managed to extract the elements bound to it. By doing so, he provoked the creation of an equally powerful opposite magical power which collided with the zodiac power source, causing both of them to cancel each other out. The collision, of course, created a massive um, havoc stream thing, and it was assumed that Aquilus had perished in that on the aftermath of that uh, effect. But recently, some of the majors that has uh, or that designed and created the Zodiac Power Source has become victims of some very unfortunate incidents. And just prior to the game's start, the second last of those majors finds himself under attack from fire columns that suddenly spews out of the ground. Summoning his strength, he teleports Sanak away and implores him to restore the zodiac power source. The way Sanak has to go about doing that is by acquiring different zodiac scrolls. And as you may be aware, of course, there are 12 zodiac signs, so therefore, logically, 12 zodiac scrolls. And the zodiac signs are divided into four sets of three, each bound to a certain element. Um, you have water signs, air signs, uh, fire signs, and earth signs. So, not only do you need to acquire the different zodiac scrolls, you also need to acquire the element tablet that is connected to a set of zodiac signs because that allows you further progression in the game. As you start the game you are given a weapon with infinite power and as such you can likely imagine that that weapon is not particularly powerful but the fact that it never runs out of juice is a good fallback. You are also handed a shield which will protect you from one collision with an enemy. Or if you activate it by holding on the fire button, you can use it while draining its energy to pass through obstacles and enemies, but they won't be destroyed in the process, but of course you won't be without your shield. And uh, if you take any hits while not having a shield, you will instantly die. You go around and you fight enemies of various different kinds and there will also be some stone head block things which when hit with any weapon will spawn coins, enemies or a combination of both. And you are relying on the coins to acquire items, both the zodiac scrolls and also weapons and shields. When you defeat an enemy and it spawns a coin, the coin will start bouncing and every single bounce will cost, um, cause it even to half in value. So a 25 gold coin will um, drop to 10 gold value on the first bounce, uh, 5 on the second and then 1 and then dissolve. So of course in order to gain as much money as possible, you are better off trying to obtain the coins as quickly as you can. But because of the nature of the game, that is a 
time is a bit of a risky maneuver, which I'll get back to later on. The weapons and shields, you can buy them and you can also buy extra lives for that matter. Has a certain price attached to them. You can rebuy the same item, but every single time you do that, the cost will increase. So you are encouraged to a certain point to um, try and be a bit cautious with the use of your resources because you will eventually reach a price point where it is prohibitively expensive to acquire new items. From a graphical point of view, initially it is very, very easy to get a sort of Ghost and Goblins kind of vibe from it, but it is most certainly its own thing. First and foremost, the use of color is significantly more distinct in this particular game than it was in Ghost and Goblins. You may or may not be a fan of the general graphical style, but uh, for me, the important thing is that everything feels cohesive. Nothing stands out as being out of place graphically, and as such, personally, I am perfectly happy with the looks of this game. Because there's no in-play music, you rely on sound effects, of course, and thankfully the sound effects are very, very fitting for the game and of a fairly high quality, and I find them perfectly enjoyable. The title music and the high score music can perhaps seem a bit out of place because they are a bit funky, if you like, for a game of this type, but both are of a very, very high quality and I fully enjoy listening to both tunes. The controls are what you would hope them to be. Left, right, up, down will do what you expect them to do in a game of this type, and uh, thankfully they are super responsive. Being chased by an enemy and click your choice again opposite direction, hitting the fire button and destroying the enemy, not having it look like your character is basically turning around is something that I find very, very pleasing. I like when my controls are that responsive. I should mention that you can play this game two players uh, simultaneously or simultaneously, whatever people call it, but be mindful of the fact that player one is in control of the action, so if player two is not following along, then he will get chopped off screen and lose a life in the process. So, gameplay-wise, this is an exploration, fight monsters, buy stuff, gain access to new areas, and rinse and repeat. And whether or not you have the patience for that kind of gameplay, that is entirely up to you, of course. But something that has to be said is that uh, due to the nature of the fact that you need to buy things and then those things can become more and more expensive, you need a continuous source of income, which of course comes from enemies you defeat. Which means that there is a respawn mechanic in this game, something that I usually find very, very annoying, but can easily accept the necessity of such a mechanic in a game of this type. But the respawn of enemies can be very, very sudden. And many a time, if you are just walking around uh, carefree, you will find that enemies respawn on top of you, causing you to lose your shield very quickly, and then, of course, the next hit will cause you to lose a life. That being said, instead of being frustrated by a mechanic I usually don't like, in this game, I felt a desire to improve my play and try again and try again and try again because I knew I could do better. And ultimately, I would say that is the hallmark of a good game. So on that note, thanks for watching, take care and uh, see you next time. Bye bye for now.